Good evening, everybody. This is Jason with another edition of uh, the, the Brunner. Um, tonight is a, a really interesting uh, episode of one I've been wanting to do for a long time and been looking for an excuse to do it because I've had uh, numerous people on the show that has ran SCAR, but I've never actually ran, done like a full on SCAR episode. Um, and so what SCAR is, it's a smoky uh, challenge adventure run. It's basically 70-ish miles um, through the Smoky Mountain Park, um, and you can pick your poison either starting at Fontana Dam, running north up to Davenport Gap, or you can start um, at Davenport Gap and run uh, southbound and finish at Fontana. Um, so um, it's it's extremely challenging due to the limited access point unless uh, points unless you have some really good friends that will run far out onto the trail and uh, resupply you, um, which um, for people like Luke Boschweiler, he's got really good friends that, that does that for him. So, but we're, I'm talking to uh, Philip Lee, John Horner and Austin Grow tonight. Um, Philip and Austin actually ran it together. Um, they ran it uh, southbound and uh, John ran it solo with a little bit of support on the back half uh, with, a, with, a, with a friend of his um and he he went he went northbound so thank you guys for joining me tonight um it's 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 going to be a good time so thank you so i guess to get started um you know i guess we'll start with um john you know john with with scar and you um i i kind of know john john's a good friend of mine what was it that drew you to run in SCAR? Um, well, I first heard about the SCAR probably about 2016, um, just on Facebook and online. It started ultra running in 2015. And man, it just sounded like such, like such a cool, like amazing run. Um, you know, the Smokies, it's just, a wonderful place it's beautiful and there's a lot to take in there it's it's a really special place and so like the idea of like you know covering you know a uh, full traverse of the park along the Appalachian Trail it just sounded just really awesome and you know at that time it's not something I thought I would have ever like attempted or done but you know ultra running has a way of of um of progressing until you, and as you keep finding these more and more difficult and dumb challenges. Um, so yeah, I first did it in 2019 and took three tries and here we are. And, and, and we'll get back to your tries in a minute because um, I think, you know, that was, it was, it was interesting because I was, I was there for at least you know, uh, one of those tries. So um, I guess, you know, Philip and Austin, you guys ran it together. What was it? It was, is it something with you guys? Is it something that has been like a goal for a while? Or was it one of those, you know, things that, you know, you just kind of heard about and you said, what the hell, let's jump into this and do this. Uh, we oh. actually had planned on, on doing it together last year. And Austin had some issues with his foot that kept us from going. So we've been kind of planning on doing this for a year and a half. And I think uh, us not going last year was probably one of the biggest blessings in disguise because it gave us so much more time to prepare our bodies for what we were going to go through. Yeah. Yeah, I uh, I developed a stress fracture in my foot. And it's funny because I left the, the doctor. I called my wife. And then the, the next thing I thought of was like, ah, oh, damn, Scar, I can't, I can't do Scar with Philip, which is not the first thing you think, you shouldn't be thinking about like, you know, the next call after I call my wife is, is another guy <laughs> to tell him we can't go running super long. But yeah, it was, it was definitely a bummer to not knock it out, but I think Philip's right. I mean, it was way harder than either of us thought. And that gave us the whole, well, him, the fall to, uh, to prepare and then me kind of recover and um yeah so I think it was good that we didn't we didn't do it then so so when you talk about challenging and you guys can just kind of just 
take turns talking about this real quick. Um, you know, how, you know, how do you prepare for something of this magnitude? Because I really don't, I think, you know, Austin, you hit on it a little bit. It was way harder than, you know, you had anticipated it being, but like how, you know, you know, I know you guys are in middle Tennessee, you know, John, I know you're in, you know, you're in, in North Carolina, you know, um, you know, how, you know, were you guys doing, would you guys prepare like you did for an ultra, you know, like a hundred mile uh, race preparing for this? You know, what was the preparation like for something of this magnitude? And you can talk a little bit about, did you guys spend time preparing, like, you know, did you carry extra stuff with you, extra gear to get used to the heavy, the, the heavier load? You know, what was that like? Uh, who wants to go first? Philip, take okay, it go. Uh, for me, I went and found as many hills as I could climb. Um, I spent a lot of time doing repeats at Percy. Uh, a lot of times just, just over and over. It wasn't about how much miles I was getting. It's how much miles I was getting with the elevation included. And I was trying to get, you know, 10,000 feet a week um, for, for several consecutive weeks. I did it. Uh, and, and then to talk about how it was so much harder than you could expect. I think once you hit fatigue, it's impossible to pre prepare for that much fatigue. And I just, you know, I just think I got way more fatigue than I thought I would. And I just wasn't prepared for that part. <clears throat> so Austin, yeah. go, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, for me, um, yeah, I did a lot of, slow hiking up this one specific hill there's a hill that's like 10 minutes from my house it's in a residential neighborhood and it's like one of the steepest surface streets in nashville and um so i would just every morning park across the street and hike up and down this hill uh it was like about 350 feet per mile so um you know, you, you, you can't, in Nashville, you can't get those long sustained climbs. That's what was so wild about the Smokies is like you start climbing, you're climbing for like four hours. Mm -hmm. um, you just keep climbing. And so, um, yeah, my training was just a mix of slow miles at the park, uh, some easy kind of neighborhood miles on the road. And then honestly, I spent a lot of time at this one hill. And these people that lived in this neighborhood probably thought I was a psycho because it's like every morning I'd be out <laughs> climbing up and down this hill and, you know, people are out getting their newspaper and I'm just like dripping in sweat. And I'm like, don't worry about it. It's, it's, it's okay. Um, so yeah, just kind of a lot of elevation. Um, but yeah, I mean, like Philip said, I don't know how you train for the fatigue, how you train for being awake for 27 plus hours. Um, I don't know if that's something you can train for. I mean, unless you, yeah, sort of practice staying awake at a long time, but that was new for me. I mean, that was like, not only the distance was my distance PR, but like time awake, time, you know, PR, that was, that was a trip. So I don't know how you do that. Maybe it's just kind of getting out there and doing these kind of adventures. Um, that seems to be the way that you sort of prepare for the fatigue and like being awake that long. Gotcha. Yeah, it makes sense. So, so John, you were, you know, you're the only one not in middle Tennessee. What was the preparation for you? Because, you know, you, you have, you had a lot of things going on besides SCAR um, because you also were training for a, a pretty big race after SCAR and you were kind of using SCAR as kind of a buildup for that. But how did you prepare yourself for, for, all that climbing um, and and the fact that you had been out there already a couple times, you kind of already knew what you a little bit about what you were getting into. But but what did your preparation look like? Yeah, um, so prepping for something like this long, um, you know, there's the physical side and there's the mental side. I know both, you know, played big parts in it. Um, you know, for the physical training, you know, it's not a mic, you know what uh, Philip and Austin have talked about. Um, I don't know how familiar y'all are with like, like the Raleigh area, 
but it's not unlike middle Tennessee. Like, you know, it's hilly in spots, but you know, it's not being like in Western Carolina or East Tennessee where those, there's those big climbs. Um, so each week, you know, I'd have like, uh, my training volume, um, and that was just time-based, like, uh, a time-based training volume. But uh, also each week, I would have at least like two sessions where I hopped on the treadmill and just worked on uh, power hiking and climbing just, you know, for maybe an hour at a time, just bring the treadmill up to 15%. And that helped, you know, um, get in some more vert and help practice those longer climbs. Um, I know you mentioned uh, carrying like, you know, a bunch of extra gear. Um, each week on my long run, uh, at the end of the week, I like uh, load up my pack with everything I was going to carry, um, you know, even, even um, you know, I carry like, you know, like six full water bottles at a time, even though I'm just going out for like, you know, a three or four hour run in like the park where there's like a water fountain every few miles just to get used to having on my back and also making sure that um, you know, there wasn't anything that was going to be uncomfortable that was going to figure out, you know, when I got out to, you know, scar, because, you know, once you're out there, you are out there, you know, mm -hmm. there's parts of that route where you're like 20 miles from the nearest trailhead. So, you know, if you've got a problem, it's up to you to solve it. Um, so if there's anything you can prevent before that, you want to make sure you have that dialed in. Um, but yeah, and then like the mental side, you know, you just have to prepare for just a really long day. Um, prior to this, uh, you know, I'd had 200 mile finishes or two 100 mile finishes. Uh, um, both of those were, you know, over 24 hours. So I um, wasn't completely unfamiliar without being, uh, with being out there for that long. Um, but I wouldn't say I'm comfortable with that because, you know, you hit that night section between those one to 5 a.m. hours and stuff gets weird. You are just dog tired and you just want to crawl up in a ball by the side of that trail and you just you just want to go to sleep. Mm -hmm. um, so like to help with that, you know, I made sure to have like a pacer lined up uh, when I hit um, Newfound Gap, which going uh, northbound was roughly 40-ish miles in. Um, and that just helps make a world of difference. And then also to kind of help with that, I carried like these, um, uh, this drink mix that had uh, about 200 mil of caffeine per packet. And I had about two of those uh, after Newfound Gap, where I'd also taken in a, like an actual drink with like 200 mil of caffeine. So that helped, but it was at night section, it was still like a long haul. Oh, absolutely. And I think, you know, you know, how would you, you know, and, and I guess, you know, we, we talked about it, you know, privately, but, you know, compared to your, your rim, the river finish that you had, the, the multiple rim, the river finishes you had, like, do you think the difference of what made rim the river easier? Do you think it was the fact that you had more opportunities for aid or do you think it was just the fact that the course was just easier? Um, I mean, rim to river, I mean, you know, hundred miles is still a hundred miles. It's not easy, but I mean, rim to river, um, beautiful course by the way, but it's definitely not as, burly is something like the scar and you know having those aid stations every like five or six miles you know that helps out tremendously you know especially mentally it just kind of gives you something to like look forward to um also gives you more chances to like you know fill up on actual like real food instead of like snacks and like i guess like sports nutrition type products so yeah that definitely helps yeah it makes it makes a difference so i guess let's just kind of jump into what each of these look like for you guys. Um, so we'll we'll talk. We'll start with Philip and and Austin um, with y'all's attempt. So you know, for for those that that don't know, Scar, you only have two crew access points. You have um, um, you have it at Newfound Gap and Clingman's Dome, or Clingman's Dome and Newfound Gap, depending on which way you're going. And um, Philip and Austin's um, instance, they had aid at Newfound Gap and then at Clingman's Dome. No, so, no Clingman for us. 
no Clemens for y'all. Okay, so yeah, they, they only had paid one. So let's, yeah. let's, let's, let's talk about how y'all's runs happened. So mm-hmm. what time did you guys, so you had somebody drop you off at Davenport, right? And what, what time did you guys begin? Yeah, so we, we actually camped at Fontana because we thought it would be easier to, when, when it all was said and done, to sort of be five minutes away from a tent to crash, which was super helpful. Um, and so I think we woke up at four and got out the door by 4.30, 4.45, about two hours. And so I think we started around 7.30-ish, right, right before eight. Um, and so, yeah, so we did that drive, hit the McDonald's to get some uh, egg McMuffins, as you do. And uh yeah, I got dropped off at Davenport around seven-ish, so. Seven-ish, and so you guys started around, you said seven, seven thirty, and so why did you guys choose to go southbound and not northbound? What was the draw of going southbound for y'all? I'll defer to Philip because he did all the planning. I think at one point he said it's easier going southbound. <laughs> which I don't know how to, I don't know if it's easier either way. It's still hard as hell, but um, Philip did a lot of the logistical stuff on the front end, which I give him credit for. So I'll, I'll let him answer why he chose that way. Uh, it re- mostly was a coin flip. Let's just go South. Uh, I knew the North area better. I, kn- I knew that half of the park and I, and I was more comfortable starting there and then go into the places in in the dark where it really doesn't matter how comfortable you are anyway with the area um so it it mostly was was just basically we're going south i just decided one day all right that's that's it we're going south and stuck with it going south so so break down the first part of that run for you guys did you know, the first the first part of it, did it go relatively uneventful for you guys? Did you guys, uh, you know, talk about your nutrition a little bit? You know, what were you guys, you know, fueling on for those that that first that first part? Because obviously fueling is going to be pretty critical in a run of this nature because you you got to make sure you have plenty of, 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 you know, new, you know, nutrition to 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 get it done. So how did that first part play out for you guys? Yeah, I feel like it went, you know, to speak for Philip, went pretty smooth. I mean, we kind of kept a really comfortable pace, hiking up, you know, running or like a slow, you know, slow jog down. Um, for me personally, nutrition, I use Tailwind, salt pills, and actually I use no gels this whole time. I don't really like gels. Gels don't really do it for me. So I try to bring as much real food as possible. So bars, snacks um i always usually have a couple like bigger meals so like uh ramen is a good option or you can like keep it dry and hydrate it with water and 30 Mm -hmm. minutes later you have a delicious entree uh my first half my big meal was uh, a big ziploc of chef blair di ravioli um so you look like a total psycho eating that because there's no like there's no easy way to like clean way to eat it um, so yeah, I kind of like had one big meal and then mostly just, yeah, bars, snacks, candy, that kind of stuff. Um, and yeah, I feel like we, we made it to Newfound in 10 hours. So it felt really comfortable. Uh, I mean, I don't want to speak for Philip, but it felt, I feel like it felt comfortable for both of us. Did you guys run into any any wildlife i know that cosby area is pretty notorious for bears and whatnot they typically close that area down quite a bit for bear activity did you guys hit anything going going into and up to you found we were actually yeah. safe through there all clear through there all clear what what did what, what did what did you eat on during that why austin uh, I'm, I'm ravioli opposite of Austin, I'm more gels. I like spring energy. Um, I also do tailwind and I do base salts for salts. Um, but my big meal in the first half was I had uh, ramen. I actually forgot to put my soup in, in, in my pack and I had some emergency ramen. So at Tri-Corner, I put some, some water in the ramen and just stopped in the middle of the trail and 
finished it down. I got you. So you guys got the new found. That was your only crew access point. Why did you guys defer not to have any any anybody at uh, at Clemens? Uh, because it was about to be dark. It was just easier to get everything that we needed and not 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 mess with meeting someone in ten more miles. I got you. Plus, we only had one crew person and and no pacers, so it was just easier to just load up in the parking lot, let Nicole go be on her way, and and us us go out into the night. Did you guys did you guys have some, a a bigger meal at Newfound? Uh. I didn't eat as much as I probably should have. I had a burger, uh, some chips, and a coconut water. Um, sometimes when I get to going on longer things, it's harder, you know, for me to put food in my body. It's just something I'm still working on on being able to do. But I did eat a burger and 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 some uh, coconut water. That coconut water is good. Yeah, I had coconut water, some cold fruit, and then I uh, had. Well, one of those mountain house dehydrated meals. Yeah, those, those are like great. Camp, camping meals. So mm -hmm. put that in there um, and then uh, scarf that down. So um, yeah, that was a good kind of, and, and I didn't intend on sitting down, but we got there and like Nicole had set up this like amazing spread of our, our coolers and chairs. And I'm like, well, I guess I got to sit down now. And then once you sit down, it gets harder and harder to get up. And actually John Harden sent, sent us a text and because uh, I sent him a photo of us sitting down eating our food and he was like, you guys need to get up and go. And so we're like, OK, well, we should probably go, Philip. John says we got to go. <laughs> so John Harden says we need to go. We got to go. So um, go. but it, yeah, it was good to kind of fill our bellies because that was a that was a, a the, the next section was very hard and um, took quite a while. So I, I think it was good, even though it took a little time to have a little bit of a break. Oh, absolutely. I, I know. I crewed uh, Will Ells and Greg Armstrong when they did SCAR and they went southbound. And um, I remember when they came in to Newfound Gap, um, I think they sat down for maybe, gosh, maybe it was 10 minutes at the most and they were gone. It was, it was, it was super fast. It was way faster than I, I know I probably would have wanted to set, wanted to have set much longer, but um, so you know, it, it, the, the way I'm learning about SCAR is the first part of it is typically pretty uneventful. The second part is when all the fun typically happens. Mm -hmm. And so for you guys, you guys had a lot of fun in the second half because I was reading some of your uh, comments and, you know, kind of race, uh, not race, but uh, run snippets. And uh, so you guys went southbound. How uh, the second part, part, once you got past Klingman's, how was that? Like, you know, you know, I, I, I know you got, you ran into the, or heard the pigs, um, you know, what, what was the rest of it like for y'all? I can remember saying the climb to Klingman's was like demoralizing <laughs> and, and, and like, we felt so good and we were moving along so smooth. And then we had this climb that just beat us. And at the end of it, it was dark. So we got beat down. And then the lights turned out and, and it just got really, really weird, especially with like from Siler's Bald uh, to, to Molly's, there were just pigs everywhere. I mean, I mean, probably more than 20, what we would think would be separate counters of, of pigs that were really close to the trail. And it's, it's a real intimidating sound once they start grunting and and get carrying on because you're messing up their meal they're eating there and and it's just it's it's intimidating it really is yeah a lot of the encounters we uh you know you kind of hear them huff and puff on the side of the trail there's a couple where it's like five feet off the trail there's high grass and you see the grass start swaying like that scene in jurassic park where you know the t-rex is back there but you can't quite see him yet it was exactly like that and yeah i mean you're it's two o'clock in the morning you've been running for however long you've been running there's wild animals right next to you I mean it, it definitely was spooky for sure uh, and I think the mistake we made is neither of us had anything with caffeine so uh that was that was a that was a an uh-oh um because I started yawning at 10 o'clock I'm like 
that's not a good sign. It's only 10 o'clock and I'm yawning. Like we got a long way to go and I don't have anything with caffeine. So check that for the next time is uh, caffeine pills or some food with caffeine. Yeah. So. And it's funny you mentioned the pig sounds because when Will and Greg, when they got finished and they did the same direction you guys went, that was the first thing that Will said was how unsettling the pigs were. Because he said that you're running and all you can, you can really hear them. You really can't see them very well. And he said that sound is like all around you for a very long portion. So apparently that portion that you guys heard him on is the same portion that I guess they heard him on. And it, he just talked about it was just really just extremely unsettling because that's all you hear for a very long amount of time. So you guys, you guys pushed through the night. Um, you know, did you, you know, were there any points in time where you guys just really hit some major, uh, I guess, walls or anything like that? Or did you just kind of this trudge through? Because the part that you guys did the second half, you had Thunderhead, you had Rocky Top, you had some of those really pretty big climbs that, um, that, 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 that really beat you down. So, you know, you know, what was that like, you know, did, was, was that just, this a trudge over the mountain or, you know, did you guys have to, you know, have any sustained stops or anything like that? Uh, no real sustained stops. There were, there were several times though, we would be in the middle of a long climb and it just was, you had to stop for a couple minutes to get, to get over, um, over the hump. It was just up and down and up and down and up and down. Uh, for what seemed like forever. Um, plus your legs are extremely tired of doing it and it's hard to make them just keep, keep doing the constant climbing. They just don't want to do it anymore. And you just got to have your mind to where you can to make them go over it. But it was, it, it was no way the cakewalk that I had mentally thought the second half, like, Oh, we're, we're halfway through. Let's get, we're going to get this over with quick. <laughs> no, it got, it got weird. And, and, you know, towards the end, both of us were seeing things off in the woods, like all the tree stumps looked like people sitting there or, or other things just in the woods. So once the wheels started coming off, it was a whole, whole different ball game. And, and, you know, as crazy as it sound, it was fun. You know, it, it was fun to get there. Well, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm sure. I mean, and so you, you, you guys, you guys, once you guys finished, did you guys, you touched the sign and did you just, you just you crash at your campsite? <laughs> yeah, we pretty much, um, you know, it's funny because I told Philip, I was like, once you get to Molly's, it's all downhill. Like I've looked at the elevation profile, <laughs> it's downhill for Molly's, which makes no sense. Cause I ran, I did the, like two weeks before that I ran from Davenport or from uh, Fontana to, to uh, Newfound with John Harden. So I had already ran that section, but for some reason, at like two o'clock in the morning, I'm telling Philip, like, man, once we get to Molly's, like, we can, we can, let's cruise. Let's, let's do like 10 minute miles down. Let's knock this out sub 24. So we get to Molly's and it's downhill for like, you know, a, a minute. And then you start climbing again. I'm like, oh, it's just a couple more climbs, Philip. And then it's, then it's the, then it's the downhill. And then, you know, I didn't, really fully grasp it it's not all downhill for molly's which is funny that's kind of i'll tell him i'm going to make him a bumper sticker and put that on his car it's like it's all downhill for molly's <laughs> but um yeah molly's is when i started hallucinating really bad and it all kind of materialized in like hog form because we had just been like so, so many hogs so i was seeing hogs that weren't there i told philip i like saw one in like a trap and I was convinced it was it was like making noise and I could hear it in my brain, but it wasn't there. And then I would like, like trees would become hog, like everything was hog related. <laughs> I'm not gonna be eating bacon for probably a couple of months after this thing, I'm just, you know. Um, but yeah, so started seeing things, saw somebody blowing up an air mattress on the side of the trail that wasn't quite there. Um, but yeah, once we, once we, uh, we got picked up. Philip's girlfriend came up about two miles in to meet us. And then we all kind of hiked down together and uh, touched the sign. I fell down and 
Philip was like, man, you can't fall asleep right here. We, we got to get back in the car. So got in the car and uh, I think we both zonked out for a couple hours before driving back home. So that's awesome. So, all right, John. So you, you're, John, you, this was your third attempt at SCAR. Yeah. And the first two didn't, didn't work out for you the way you, 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 you wanted, um, you know, and so this third time, what was different about this third time was the first two times you had somebody with you, right? Like you had, you had a partner that was going to go with you the entire time. This time you were pretty much going to do it solo for, a, like you said, the new found. So talk about how everything broke, broke down for you. Um, you know, you know, what, what sort of, you know, you talked about the caffeine you carried with you, what sort of, you know, what, what sort of food were you fueling on going up? Yeah. So as far as nutrition, um, uh, we'll start with, uh, I'm a big fan of like Goose Roctane, their drink mix. It's a 250 calorie per serving, uh, drink mix. Uh, so I started the day with about six water bottles full of that. Uh, um, so I had that. Then also I had some Gucci, something quick. I don't generally take, a, take in a lot of gels just to, especially like, you know, those long, slow efforts. Like you're going so slow, your body can take in a lot more than just a gel. Um, mm -hmm. so, but I did have a few just in case. And then, um, I also had some, uh, peanut butter crackers and some bacon jerky. Um, so that's what I carried with me as far as nutrition. And so how did the first half of it, I guess first, I won't say half, but the first part of the Klingmans, how did they, how did that shake out for you going in to Klingmans? Cause I know you got aid at Klingmans and at Newfound. When you, did you run into any issues going up or was it pretty, was it just like Philip in Austin where that first part was just kind of a, you just kind of, I don't want to say cruised, but you just kind of eased your way up to the top with nothing really major happening. Yeah, I mean, I was really fortunate in, in that I didn't really have any like major mishaps or anything like that, at least no huge concerns. It was, honestly, that first section from Fontana to Clingman just flew by. It's just it's like it just yeah, it just flew by. Um the only thing was like the night before uh the, uh I took it on. Uh there's like a big thunderstorm that blew through. Um so there were a lot of portions of the trail that were muddy. Um so that slowed me down a little bit. Um, and I probably didn't make up like as much time on some of the runnable sections, especially like the downhills, just cause, um, it was, yeah, it was real muddy. It was like, you know, a slip and slide in some of those sections. Um, there wasn't a lot of water just like standing on the trails, but, um, definitely muddy, um, stopped once to filter, uh, a, just one bottle of water to top off at, uh, Russell Field. Um, I think that's about 14 miles in, if I remember correctly, going northbound. Um, it was, the weather was great. It was cool, but not cold. Um, I was comfortable for all 27 hours I was out there. Um, it was very foggy, as is characteristic of the Smokies. So I didn't get like any real, just like big panoramic views, but it, it was definitely really, really scenic out there, you know, even with all the fog. Um, yeah, I got to, I'm trying to think, I got to Newfound. I don't remember what my time split was on that. Um, probably, let's say just under like 11 hours. Um, so going northbound, that'd be about 33 miles in with about 12,000 feet of gain mm -hmm. already. Um, so yeah, I got up there, um, saw, uh, you know, my crew, Will Ells and Kara Molitor, um, which I know I'm infinitely thankful for their help. Um, and also, to, you know, my pacer, Pete Schreiner, who I picked up later in. Um, so got up there, um, was 
want to run that closer to 10, but again, with the conditions, you know, still doing okay, but uh, not quite as fast as I was hoping, because um, I was really hoping to like get to Newfound Gap um, with a little bit of daylight left, just because, you know, felt uh, like that'd be just mentally, that would be, you know, a bit of more um, encouraging, I guess. Um, but yeah, uh, Kira paced me from Clemens to Newfound. Um, sun went down on us on that segment. Uh, so got to Newfound. It's already a little, it had already been dark for a little while. Um, and that's um, taken just like, you know, a quick stop at Clemens, just like, you know, topping off water and just one or two other items. And then the stop at Newfound was the more, all right, I'm going to sit down here. Um, just take in some, you know, more real food. Like I had a couple cheeseburgers and some ramen there. Um, just make sure I had all my gear straight and prepared for the night. Um, and again, that's where I picked up, you know, my Pacer Pete, who carried me for the last, you know, 32-ish miles of that. Um, yeah, and went into the night and that was a long, slow night. Um, especially, you know, with all that fog around us, you really couldn't see much of anything. Uh, there are a lot of times where we had just, you know, tunnel vision, could see only like, you know, a few feet ahead of us, but, you know, we made it through it. Um, there were probably two times during like the night section, uh, as with me, where I was like, all right, I just gotta sit down here for a minute, just close my eyes. And I mean, it wasn't long at all, maybe two or three minutes. It's just like, I need to sit down just, you know, for a minute. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then, you know, the sun came out on us, or the sun rose up on us around camera. I couldn't tell you if it was exactly before or after, but somewhere in there, and it was, you know, it was beautiful. And, you know, the fog finally lifted and we started to see a little bit more. And yeah, I finished up, I guess that was just before noon the next morning. So did you, did you have any crazy hallucinations like Austin where you were seeing pigs everywhere or anything like that? I didn't have any crazy hallucinations this time. Um, I had a lot at my last 100 miler in November and that was a real trip. Like um, there I was seeing like um, just imagining rocks as like random items like along the trail. The one I distinctly remember was I thought I saw like this giant like cassette tape in front of me. Um, that's the one that stands out, but this time at Scar, I didn't really see anything like that. I saw, I saw maybe like what appeared to be like a silhouette of like a person just like out of the corner of my eye here and there, um, but nothing too wild. So, so, so it sounds like, you know, you, you just, you just basically just, just trudged your way through, you know, and, 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 and got your, you know, got your scar finish. So I guess between the three of you, and I'll, I'll go one at a time, um, as we're, you know, as we're, we're, we're close, you know, wrapping things up here, if you had to grade, and I know what the politically, what the political answer is going to be, which section of it do you feel like is the more challenging section? Do you feel like the the northbound section or the southbound section? What do you think, Philip? Which which one do you do you feel like is more challenging? Uh, the sec the second half by far, but I think most of that boils down to to how fatigued you are once you get there. It, it just seemed like two different worlds to me. Uh, that that second half when you're just constantly hitting peak after peak after peak just seemed ungodly hard yeah john what do you think which do you because you actually have started both directions fresh which in your mind is the harder of the two sections um so actually i've only i've only attempted this northbound like in all oh, that's right these attempts that's right every time um and I don't know, it's really hard to say. I might have to try to run it southbound one time so I can give you like an answer. But uh, one of the reasons I was going northbound is because like on paper, I thought it would be easier because it's like for the total run, there's about 18,500 feet of gain, you know, give or take. Um, and 
if you're going northbound, you knock out like 12,000 of that by the time you hit Clingman Stone, approximately 32, 33 miles in. So I was like, all right, cool. Get all the heavy hitting out of the way. There'll be five or 6,000 feet of elevation like on the last 30 after newfound. Um, piece of cake, you know, I've run 50K races with more elevation than that. But I, I don't know, after having done it, I don't know. Just um, part of it may be like, you know, Philip said, just like how tired and fatigued you are, like going through like the night portion of it. Um, that probably plays a significant part, but thinking back to it, like um, going northbound, the first 10 to 14 miles of that is probably about the smoothest, most like buffed out section of the entire uh, 72 mile segment. So, I mean, a case could be made for going southbound. I gotcha. Austin, what do you think to you, which one was the most challenging of the two? I think that what Philip said, the, the second half, the southbound section, um, but I, it also, also depends on where you hit it. Cause like I said, I had ran that section two weeks before going the other way and I felt great. Like uh, we did that section in 12 hours, under 12 hours. And so when we got to Newfound, I was like, man, this is just, you know, we got 12 hours until we're going to finish, wrap this up. And, um, but no, I, I mean, I think it, yeah, it, it's tough. It's all tough. I mean, it's there's not really an easy section, but um, yeah, if I had to choose choose a section, it would definitely be that that Thunderhead area. I mean, all that is, yeah, it, it's it sucks Everybody's, in a good way. Yeah, you and, uh, doing that in the night. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So the one thing you know before we wrap up i don't know philip in austin i don't know if you know this but there is actually a belt buckle a scar belt buckle have you guys seen it uh, we talked about it yeah you can buy them on uh you can get them on etsy john actually has a scar belt buckle um that was that was uh that was presented to him when he finished uh will was was kind enough to to have it ready for him when he finished is pretty cool. And, uh, you know, for something of that magnitude, I, I think there's, you, you should have something to, 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 to brag that you did it. Cause it's a humongous accomplishment. Um, you um, know, I don't, have it, I don't have it in front of me, but it's actually got like a print on it. That's like based off a 1955 map of the park and shows like part of the uh, Appalachian trail cutting through it. It's really cool. And um, the cool thing about Will was um, he had that, he did actually got it a couple years ago and he set it on his medal, like, you know, with my name on it and would like periodically send me like pictures of that saying it's waiting for you when you're going to, when you're going to take it. So that was like a cool little bit of like, you know, encouragement. Yeah, absolutely. That's it's it. And, 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 and you got it. And so that's really awesome. Um, but you, you know, I, I, you know, I, I think that this has been a really cool conversation I actually had, um, you know, um, I've had some people reach out and asked if I could have you guys on to talk about your SCAR uh, experience. And so um, it's been cool to have you guys on and talk about it. Um, it's definitely a humongous uh, accomplishment. Not a lot of people can say they have done it um, unless your name is Luke Boschweiler, um, you know, who just goes out there and just runs it just for the hell of it and um you know outruns bears and everything so but um but you know that that's going to be it for tonight you know philip uh, john austin i really appreciate you guys uh, taking time out to talk to me and 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 go over your experience there um and um it's just it's been a really good time so thank you you know thank you to all y'all of course thanks. thanks for having us cool so that's going to be um it for this week um, as always, you know, there'll be a video and audio version of this and um, I will see you on the trip.